Yo. This is an exercise on translations. The most recent lesson was covering just a summary, an overview of the transformations, and this one will be focusing on horizontal translations. So I'm going to start off with this, y equal absolute value of x, and let's look at this function. It looks like a v. Now the next graph I'm going to bring up is y is equal to the absolute value of x minus 2. And I've ruined the, the uh, suspense for this because I've got a graph right below it. But if you were to compare these two graphs, you'll see that the shape is identical. But by introducing that minus 2 to the equation, or replacing x with x minus 2, we picked up that graph and moved it two units to the right. So that is a horizontal translation of two units to the right. Now if we went back to that graph, y is equal to the absolute value of x, the original basic graph, untransformed, and now I want to sketch y is equal to the absolute value of x plus 3. And here are both the graphs. The original is unlabeled, but is there. And the absolute value of x plus 3, this time, when you replace x with x plus 3 in the function, we get a translation of three units, not in the positive direction, but in the negative direction, to the left. And this pattern is always true for all functions. Doesn't matter if it's absolute value, quadratic, um, you name it. And notice how the signs are always opposite with the horizontal ones. So x plus 3 moved us to the left x minus 2 moved us to the right. And that's what you have to get used to with the horizontal translations. So as it states, always true for all functions. So let's go through a few more. And here we identify the horizontal translations of each of the following. So y is equal to x minus 5 squared relative to y is equal to x squared. Now these are quadratic equations, quadratic functions. The difference is the x has been replaced with x minus 5. So without doing anything more, I see that that x minus 5 is moving it 5 units to the right. And if you look at the graphs, the original isn't labeled, but it's a quadratic function with its vertex at the origin. We pick it up and move it five units over. So the pattern is the same for all functions. Now this one, y is equal to 1 over x plus 4 relative to y is equal to 1 over x. You will recognize 1 over x as a reciprocal function, which means that x cannot be equal to 0. So you get a graph looking like this in quadrants 1 and quadrants 3. So the, the graph of y is equal to 1 over x plus 4, we have replaced x with x plus 4. And according to what we've seen, when x is replaced with that number, that plus 4, gives us a translation of 4 units to the left. You can see they've got the dotted line there representing the vertical asymptote at x equal negative 4. So that means that's an inadmissible value for x. This always works. Doesn't matter what type of function you've got. So here, a horizontal translation of four units left. So the plus four, the sign is always opposite. Then y is equal to three to the x minus one relative to three to the x. This is an exponential function. The base is three, and the base will always be different, and that base does not give you any is not a transformation, it's just the base of the exponential graph. And the original untransformed is 3 to the x, looking like that. We actually have a y-intercept of 1 on that, which is always true for exponential functions. And it has a horizontal asymptote of the x-axis. It gets closer and closer to the x-axis without touching it. So if we look at 3 to the x minus 1, we get this graph. Now it might be hard to recognize it cleanly from this, but that it's the same graph, but it's been moved to the right one unit. This is a horizontal translation of one unit to the right. So the original was transformed or translated one unit to the right. And notice the same thing. X gets replaced with a factor 
x plus or minus a number. So in general, for any function y equal f at x, y equal f at x minus h is a horizontal translation of h units. So you've got to get in the habit of identifying that the sign changes. As we've seen there, the sign is always opposite for horizontal translations. This is what we're actually doing. We're replacing x with x minus h. So that is it for this little exercise. The next one will be on vertical translations. Thank you for your time.